Okay, wanted to get in here and talk to you guys about vertebrae. People tend to have a little bit of trouble with the vertebrae. I always tell people, you know, don't worry about the details on vertebrae just yet. Figure out the basics of the vertebrae. For example, the fact that you've got several different vertebrae um, in your vertebral column, as you can see on that model right there in the background, uh, a lot of different vertebrae. But the thing you need to understand here is that you only have three different types. You've got cervical vertebrae, which is the one I'm holding here. You've got thoracic vertebrae, which is the one I'm holding here. And then you've got lumbar vertebrae, which is the one that you're holding here. Now, you got to be pretty basic about this. I mean, think about it this way. You're normally able to tell different types of cars apart based off of their specific little tweaks and twerks and, and, and details. For example, cervical vertebrae. I always recognize cervical vertebrae for one reason. They are the only vertebrae that have three holes. Look at this one. He's got three holes. Thoracic, one hole. Lumbar, one hole. Cervical, three holes. Now, you have three holes in your cervical vertebrae because these guys, known as transverse foramen, these transverse foramen um, allow blood vessels to pass through them, which cervical means neck, so that means that these blood vessels are passing through uh, the neck area and some of these blood vessels are going into your skull to provide blood to and from your actual brain and of course the spinal cord passes through this vertebral foramen the middle hole that's there now all of the vertebrae have a body that's the body that's his body and then that's his body and they have some things about them that are different as far as size cervical vertebrae tend to be pretty small they are in your neck. Cervical vertebrae then move on to get larger, which are the thoracic vertebrae. And then, of course, the lumbar vertebrae are the largest. Now, of course, the lumbar vertebrae are going to be the largest because the lumbar vertebrae are in your lower back. And so they're carrying the weight of your entire upper body. So they've got to be larger. Cervical vertebrae, when you look at it, it looks like a little over top top-down space shooter game that you put on your smartphone, you know, like Galaga or whatever. So, you know, the little thing is moving back and forth and shooting little lasers or whatever. So it kind of does have that little appearance. And, of course, it always happens to have three holes. Don't forget that. Thoracic vertebrae. Some people, we have arguments in class about this. Some people say that it looks like a giraffe. Some people say that it looks like an anteater. Or some people think that it looks like Jaja Binks. No, I refuse to do a representation of Jaja Binks on this video. Sorry, next video, please. Then the third vertebrae happens to be very large. Looks like a moose. Some people say that it looks like a moose. Or it looks like a crown from a Klingon or something like that. Notice that this model actually says which lumbar it is. If you can make that out, that's an L5. Now, what does that L5 mean? Well, each one of your vertebrae has a name. And the name consists of two things, a letter and a number. The letter is the first letter in the name of the type of vertebrae it is. So let's go back to this L. Uh, this is an L5, L for lumbar. And there are a certain number of each one of these vertebrae. This cervical vertebrae, there are seven cervical vertebrae. So you have a C1, a C2, a C3, a C4, a C5, a C6, and a C7. This is a thoracic vertebrae. So it would be called a T, and then we'd figure out what number he was. I wonder if it says which one he happens to be. No. He doesn't say which one he happens to be, but believe it or not, he might be about a, oh, I'd probably say a six or a seven, probably. Five, six, or seven. So if he was a T5, then that would mean that he's a thoracic vertebrae and he's the fifth one down the line. Remember our vertebrae over there? So there's five in the neck. 
and then there's seven going down your back and then you get to the lower vertebrae over there and that's when we see our lumbar vertebrae and we just said he's an L5 so technically he would wind up being the one at the very bottom because you actually have five lumbar vertebrae you can see him there at the bottom one two three four five now here's something to remember if you're taking an exam on this stuff uh, you've got seven vertebrae in your neck you've got twelve vertebrae going down your back believe it or not the ribs you have twelve pairs of ribs guess what your twelve pair of ribs articulate with your twelve thoracic vertebrae Ah, you like that right so you've got seven vertebrae in your neck twelve vertebrae going down uh, your thoracic cavity towards the lower part of your back they articulate with your 12 pairs of nerve, uh, not pair, two pairs of nerves, but 12 pairs of ribs. And then you have the five vertebrae that finish off in your back. Seven, 12, five. We oftentimes call this the breakfast, lunch, dinner method. You know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. You eat a breakfast early at seven o'clock, you eat lunch at 12, and you eat an early dinner at five. The breakfast, lunch, dinner method. Seven, 12, five. So you wind up having seven, twelve, and five. Now last but not least people oftentimes ask about the infamous two vertebrae that just don't seem to fit the mold. These vertebrae at some point in time in an anatomy lab you're gonna learn about these guys these are the atlas and the axis vertebrae and I just wanna kinda of, you know to show you what these vertebrae actually look like. This is the at Lis vertebrae and this is the axis vertebrae now the and if you're wondering wait it's a cervical vertebrae does it have three holes see there's one there's two there's three gotcha one two three both of them have three holes this guy is the at -lis this guy is the axis atlas remember the mythological character atlas the guy who was cursed to have to hold up the world your skull actually sits on top of this bone and if you've seen one of the previous videos you'll know that the uh, occipital condyles of your occipital bone actually rest on that and I think I brought an occipital bone with me yes I did and you'll see here where on this occipital bone you have the occipital condyles right here and those occipital condyles fit right here into these faucets and they fit in like this and that allows your head to be able to rock and allow you to say yes nod yes so the occipital condyles fit into these faucets which are here now the axis has a pivot point here where the axis and the atlas articulate watch did you see that let's do that again so the atlas articulates to the axis and just like the axis of the earth the axis ro the earth rotates on its axis this allows your head to rotate so your skull would be sitting on top of the atlas and the atlas sits on top of the axis and you can see how it allows your head to be able to rotate on this pivot point here and that my friends is a quick debut of the vertebrae. One last thing I would like to point out is people have problems keeping up with two processes. These as well as these, these are transverse processes. Transverse, going across. These are transverse processes. These are the spinous processes. Spinous, spine, this is what you can feel, those little bumps in, the, in your back that's coming from your spinous processes but these these are the transverse processes I know some of you were asking me about this well that's all we got for today see you later peace